Hello, welcome back to my Global Digital School of Art. If you are a new viewer who's just popped in to see what is going on, a big welcome to you also. Right, today's lesson is really all about a combination of the little projects which I said much earlier on. You may find them just a little bit challenging, uh, but in this particular video, which I will describe almost as uh, loose, well not so much loose, is almost pick and mix, mix and match. Because you will get, actually get the opportunity to bring this video out on your own painting in a style which you can do your own flower arrangement. <laughs> now that may sound a little bit strange, but all will become clear as we go on. Okay, it is a little bit long, it is in sections, so I would suggest you take it section by section and return to the items which you find interesting uh, because you find that my voice will go on and on and on unlike my students in class you will have the opportunity to zip me back and forwards take advantage of it okay I'm now about to get this lesson underway before I get the painting underway, uh, there's just a little bit of talk before the chalk here. Uh, right, now, I've got, uh, I'm on a 300 um, gram watercolour paper from the cheap pad which I purchased down the high street. I'm on the um, cheap watercolour paints. I'm also on the um, cheap brushes which I purchased down the high street. Uh, I will have to have one concession on this one though, um, because the um, the on, on the actual cheap brushes. What's this? This is a number. This has six one nine. It looks like six. Okay. Um, Here's, look, here's a number eight. Now, if I can just clear this back just a little bit. The actual length of hair compared to, this is uh, number eight. The length of hair, or in this case, nylon, uh, as opposed to a, a more expensive brush. Look, if you, this is also a number eight. Let me get it wet. Um, the length of hair means to say it's got a bigger, re bigger reservoir of water. And this is going to be very loose. So um, I will be using the cheaper brushes. But in order to compensate um, for the lack of water which can be held in. I will be using my um, oriental brush um, that holds an awful lot of water. Right, before we get started, look, um, what you need here is space. If you've got too many items around you, for example, even this, uh, you'll find yourself painting away from it. And I'm going to put that on the floor. And when it comes to your pad, I, I, I take the sheets off and I, I'll exaggerate it here, look. When I'm actually flowing, this edge of the pad, bit on the side or on the bottom, interrupts the flow and it, it slows me down a little bit. When I'm talking, about, well, you need space in your mind. You need space around you in as much as you can. If you're a little bit close to a wall, you'll find you're tipping your elbow in because you haven't got the elbow space even to the point that <laughs> with my students if they're sitting a little bit too close to each other um, on a table uh, they will in actual fact be restricting their elbow space I know they like to sit close together because <laughs> they enjoy a really good gossip um, but 
it, it's not helpful. So clear your mind, give yourself plenty of space. And in this particular case, I'm going to take that off my clipboard. And I've got plenty of room and I've got plenty of movement here. Um, I've got my water soluble ink and pen. I, I will refer you back to the um, video during the holly leaves uh, where I gave a little bit more information on that. What else have I got? Uh, I, oh, I've got a little bit of tissue just in case. Oh, not forgetting. Look, I've got my obligatory cup of tea. And I think that is really all there is. I need to get underway. Right, we're now going to do a very loose drawing. Hopefully you will have been practicing your scribble um, drawings, which I showed on the last video. So we're going to scribble up here. And here we go. This is, this is a glass. So it's not dissimilar to the, the original um, scribble drawing. Here's the glass scribbling away here and uh, instead of an apple we're going to have a, a vase, vase, in this case jam jar. And here's our apple going in here. Right, okay. These are going to be my flowers at the top here. Right, now I'm going to change, I'm going to change that apple, I'm going to have a, a pear, you've seen a lot of apples. I will do an apple on grapes at some point, but um, just for this purpose, let's be just a little bit different. Okay, there's my scribble drawing. That's enough, done, all right? So what I'm gonna suggest you do now is take a little, this is on a bit of computer paper, by the way. Now, take a sheet of tracing paper, which you're, you're gonna need to add to your uh, materials. And now what we're going to do is we're going to edit edit items out. So uh, I hit, hit, look, I can select whichever line I want. I'm not going to draw all the scribble lines, by the way. And look, here's my little bowl of the wine glass stem coming down look I can select any any part of that I want when it comes to the actual base of the glass and look there it is okay that's a little bit out of line not to worry okay right now the pair um, yeah, okay, the pair is okay there, I think, yeah. So, look, I only need that single line. Don't want all the scribbles in there. There's my pair. And I'm going to move it up just a fraction so I can move the glass down. with that being clipped on. Okay look I'm gonna decide where my glass is gonna go because it's a little bit central and I want it moved over just a fraction so that it doesn't uh, the side of the the, the, the vase bars doesn't come in line here with the stem. I don't want the two to clash. Okay there's there's my vase. Right I want my flowers up a little higher, so I'll move everything down. Now here's my flowers coming in here. I have no idea what these flowers are, by the way. It really doesn't matter, okay? Right, now this is a very, very useful tip, because as you can see, look, I can move, I can move items about when I'm composing a picture. And uh, 
even if I'm working from a photograph, I can do a drawing and I can move trees, I can move people, buildings, and look, hey, we can even move mountains on this one. Right now, let's get rid of the scribble drawing. And this is what I've got on my tracing paper. Um, and it's like I say, it'd be useful if you get a pad of tracing paper. I'm sure you'll start to use this quite a lot. We all do if the truth was known. And look, there's nobody watching, there's just you and I here. Okay, so only you and I need to know about this. Uh, right, now I'm going to turn that over. I don't know if I said this, but um, grease proof paper from your cooking doesn't work too well because it is grease proof and you don't want grease on there. Look, I've just changed my pencil to a 4B pencil. And I can see there's, now it's in mirror image, I can see there's a few little items out. So I can make my adjustments and get that stem. If, if the stem's fractioning out, all I've got to do is move that when I retrace it down. Look, I can make an alteration on this base. The base was a little bit on the small side. And it became more obvious once I was looking at it in mirror image. Okay, here's my pair. Look, I've moved the stalk just a little bit. Right, here's my jam jar. By the way, once you've done this, you can actually, if you want uh, a, a, a more decorative vase, let's say something of that shape, you can do so uh, and change your flowers. This is not, these flowers are not flower arrangements, by the way. They're not the Japanese Ikebana. And they're uh, just a bunch of flowers uh, casually dropped into a jam jar. All right, bunged into a jar of some sort. Okay, there we go. Right, now, I now turn that back over and I can decide on whereabouts on my piece of paper it goes. So, I, as I said, I, it's disastrous. You jam jar in the centre, you get mirror images either side. So move it fractionally over to one side and down just a little bit. Right. I now go back to an HB uh, pencil. Right, the nice thing about this is once again, it takes the pressure off of you. Um, because I'm going to tell you a story as I'm doing this. When my sisters and I were very young, we used to settle down for an afternoon's painting. We used to look on biscuit tins and in books and we had prancing horses and me, I battle scenes and things like that. And we'd sit down, we'd do our drawing, and paper was very scarce. Um, but for the first 20 minutes, everything was fine. And then you'd suddenly hear a big sigh. Um, what was actually happening was we'd finished our drawings and we were starting to watercolour. Uh, paint and what was actually happening is during the process of our drawing and getting the eraser out and everything was absolutely spot on in as much as it could be as soon as we mixed our colours and put them on they went all over the place uh, they turned to mud <laughs> So you'd suddenly get this, <sighs> and one of my sisters, or even me, we'd get out and go and play out in the garden. Because what we'd actually done, we'd actually destroyed our paper uh, in the process of drawing. So there was no way, drawing is fine, but there was no way you could do watercolour painting on it. Okay, right now, 
I've now removed that tracing paper away and I don't know if you can see this or not. I, look, there is just a slight indication. You can just see the stem there um, of the glass. So I'm going to just pencil in just a few more indication lines there. So when this goes a little bit adrift, and I expect it to by the way, I and mean, you need to expect it to as well, it really doesn't matter that much because you've got your tracing and you just do another one. Remember this is a learning uh, curve for you. Right, I can just see where everything is now. Look, I've got some flowers at the top here. I, I still don't know. I won't even know what they are when I'm actually painting them. Uh, I need my background round about there okay so now oh look I know I'm still on um, a bit of computer paper but I can use this tracing on uh, my watercolor paper from my cheap pad right I have my pen here uh, I just need to check that it's flowing and what I'm actually going to do, before I actually get down onto the actual watercolour paper, I'm just going to rehearse. Um, now I'm going to tilt this to one side. Uh, here we are. Look, I'm just rehearsing the wine glass. And look, before I actually touch down, and you'll notice I do this quite a bit with my uh, painting as well, I will actually do a dry run. Uh, and if I want to move just fractionally, I can actually do so. So here we go, dry runs. And I've got the pen up, uh, with the nib up, up the other way uh, uh, on the glass. Okay, I feel quite comfortable with that. Yeah, okay, so right now I go down to my drawing. Let's put that to one side. Um, here we go, I'll try not to get in the way of the actual camera. Right now, I'm not going to actually hit the glass uh, straight away. Um, I'm going to hit some of the, the less uh, critical lines. Look, there's two or a couple of lines down there. And I've got the pen up the right way at this moment in time. Uh, I'm at the top of the pair. I won't want too much ink at the top, so I've turned the nib up. Come round. And on the lower part, I've turned the pen up the other way. That give me a slightly heavier line. Um, look, I've left, uh, I left a little bit there because I always like to have a little bit of escape route. Um, everything which I do. Right now, I'm now comfortable. I can go around to the top of the glass. Rehearse. Here we go, nib on the fine side. Right, now you can have two or three lines around there, it doesn't matter that much. As long as you leave just that little bit of uh, escape route on the, the side where the light comes in. Okay, here we go. Uh, nib up on the fine line, coming down this side. That wasn't a very good line, but yeah, there you go. Right, nib on the heavy side. And I can be fairly ruthless down the bottom of the actual bowl of the glass. Here's the stem coming in now. Let it go, bring it back. Right, turn the nib over get a slightly finer line down there 
Right, here we come now in the base. I'm on the light side of the pen on there. I've let a little bit go. I'm coming back. Um, as I come round to the actual base here where it's in a little bit of shadow, I can come back. Slight double line there. Look, when I'm talking about double lines, um, um, look, I'm going to be scribbling up here anyway. And that's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm saying to you. It, you know, it's not that important. These lines. They're just going to be um, helpful. Let's put in a, just a little bit of uh, the blossom bit there. Okay. Right now, when I come to the flowers, I've turned my pen up the fine, fine way. Right now, remember, I don't actually know what these flowers are and it really doesn't matter at this moment in time one thing which I, I will say to you look I'm going to do another flower here and whatever you do don't go and put this flower in the center of your, uh, your, your, your vase uh, and then go and put one either side because that is you, you, you get that mirror image going on there again um, and it's a very common thing when people first start off with flowers. They they bring the flowers um, at or there's a space I'll put a flower in there. Uh, and therefore they end up with a pattern of flowers, uh, much more than a random uh, bunch of flowers. And the other thing is, if you bring them all round head on, it looks as though the flowers in the vase or jam jar, I've all turned their heads round to have a look to see, to see what you're going to do to them. <laughs> all trying to get in on the act. Okay, here we go. Look, these, these are my so-called leaves. And look, there's stems uh, in there. So I'm just going to pop a couple of random stems in there and they'll be sort of a uh, iggledy piggledy. There's no rules. I, I know that it is a jam jar, so therefore I'm going to have a bottom to the jam jar here at some point. So I can come in fairly heavy there. Heavy there. And look, as I get to the top here, well, I've got three flowers there. Um, I don't want this one isolated out on its own, so I'll give an indication that there's there's others around it. Okay. Um, let, let's go for another one slightly on on its side there like so right. and I know it's going to be fairly dark in between um, because they're bunched together so therefore some of the light is trapped in there I think I'll make them a, just uh, this bunch just a little bit larger actually. Okay, look, that will do. Um, I'll use my paints on that one. Okay, look, so this is what we've got. Um, I'll just zoom that in. Right, on this on this glass because I know that um, what's going to happen here I'm going to add in just a couple of little heavy bits on the glass here all right because this is going to give me that hopefully a little bit of sparkle I'm fiddling right now when I'm working away and chatting here I do know that I get a little bit repetitive in the things which I'm saying. As I said uh, right from the word go, um, this is unscripted talk and chalk. Um, and there, there are some important things which need repeating in each video. 
but at least you've got the advantage uh, which the students don't have you you can always fast forward this and go to the bits which you find relevant to you okay but I never know when you first start what the questions will be because you haven't got the questions um, and I can't give you answers to questions which you haven't got you need the question in order to understand uh, the answer okay so I will now move to the sploshy paint okay let's get this painting underway look I've just got it on a resting on a drawing pin so that I can move it around uh, and so it doesn't slide out of the uh, actual camera shot I've got uh, my colors now I've just popped them down onto a small palette so that I can just keep moving up and down so you can see what's going on not having the advantage of a split screen I've got my two bowls of water and you might hear a double clinking going on. That's going me going from one bowl to the other. Uh, I must get different sized bowls. I can actually play a tune. Okay, right now. Let's get my brain on the job. This is pale yellow. Um, quite watery. And all I'm going to do is just lay down my first coat. Now, it will obviously pick up some of the ink, so I don't necessarily want that um, ink uh, on my on my pair. But it's quite handy. Look, it's given me a green already. And I will leave little gaps where the stems go. And it will obviously be a lot heavier down the bottom here. And I'm putting, here's, look, I'm washing my brush. Um, I'm uh, putting colour into the actual glass and I'm going to flash a little bit of colour about. There is a reason for this is because um, I want the whole thing to relate. Uh, if I paint one object at a time uh, they will look as though they've been painted at different times by different people. Right now I've got my nice yellow, it's nice and clear so I'm going to pop that on my pear. Remember what I was saying about the cherries? Um, when I get a highlight, the highlight won't be, won't actually be white. It will be um, a pale yellow highlight I'm going to leave there. Right, my, my, look, look, because I'm touching the inks, it's going green again. That's fine no problems and look how I, right, I'm keeping my brush I don't want to lay the brush down and this might be interesting uh, no not just yet right I'm now gonna I've just washed my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my cadmium red water it down quite a lot um, or vermilion it's like I say they come under different numbers uh, names okay right now here's my here's my first flower going in there's going to be an, another one up here somewhere and I'm just going to pop just a little bit round the outside give one the feeling that there might be uh, flowers around there as well that's a bit of a big puddle I'll just nip a bit off okay and a little bit over here a little bit in my glass um, I'm not trying to tell you it's red, uh, red wine in there and a little bit on the pear that too and I'm also 
as I flash the yellow uh, yellow about, I'm also going to do the same uh, thing here with um, the red. Now look, I've dropped a little bit down there. That helps to relate to this. That can always be a petal or something later on. Okay, there's a little bit going in the bottom. Uh, right. Let's pick up a little bit more of this. Oh, I'm running out of yellow. But I want uh, the blue. So I'll pick up a little bit of blue there. That'll give me a little bit of green. And I'm just going to ease out on the top here. Okay, right. Now, I'm now going to <laughs> is my, my papers become a palette, would you believe? But okay, I'm just going to drop a little bit in the glass. That will do me. Right, okay, the blue's running around a little bit. Doesn't really doesn't matter at this moment in in time. Um, right now, what we need to do now is to allow this to dry um, because there's put some pretty big puddles about there at the moment a little bit more yellow I've just plumped a little bit more yellow in amongst this so-called flower and I might have a yellow flower up here somewhere later on so I'll put a little bit of yellow up there I can make up my mind I'm doing my sort of uh, 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 casual flower arranging as I go on, on, on my palette. So I'm just looking around. Right, <laughs> now what I want you to do, he says, thinking, what I want you to do is to let this dry naturally. I picked up a little bit of green there, by the way. You, you might have seen me do it, okay? What I'm going to do now, I'm going to hit that little tiny ink spot I put on there. And I brought it straight down, but I've also brought it round into the rim. And into the bowl. Where's the bowl there? And I'm going. It's too wet at the moment, but I'm going to take it down onto the actual stem as well. Now here's here's the other one down the bottom, quite like that, and the one at the bottom of the pair. Now look, I've left gaps between the little items, which means to say that uh, they can be little little highlights, um, very useful later on. So I haven't used up all my options yet. While I've got that. Right, now, as I look, I'm saying, uh, look, just leave that to settle, to dry. If you've got one or two puddles which are a little bit on the large side, just wring your brush out a little bit, wring it out, don't twist it, wring your brush out a little bit, and just place it on the big puddle, and you can lift off the big puddle without doing any damage, okay? There's a great big one down here on the yellow. Uh, I'll, I'll just touch it and it lifts it off. Right, now, whatever you do, don't go and put it in the sunshine, don't go and put it on the radiator, and whatever you do, please don't get this hair dryer out. Uh, they're banned in my studio, by the way. Um, what the students do at home is their business, but uh, when they're in my studio, I consider the hair dryer um, disrespectful to the paper and to your work. And surely, um, you know, what, what next? I mean, what's it going to be, sort of uh, hair straighteners? Or if you want to make a really good job of it, what about a blowtorch? <laughs> oh, look, I'm lecturing here. Look, I know watching paint dry is not particularly interesting, 
but in this particular case it is your paint um, and that is a little bit more interesting than watching somebody else's paint dry so take a little break and what you can actually do is catch up with um, psychologically with your painting what, what you've just achieved what you've just done and even at this moment in time you can look at little bits of it and you can learn from it even I may say at this moment in time all things are possible right uh, maybe on the next on the next layer some of the realities might come home to roost but it's a learning process it doesn't matter what happens the moment look I've just done this after years of playing around with colors and I've changed because every time I do a painting regardless of whether or not it turns out well or not I have changed so therefore I am become a little bit more critical so have a little break now um, go away catch up with what you've done right and even at this moment in time it's rather beautiful okay I'm going to stop here and I shall return oh shall I zoom in yes I'll zoom in there you go Okay, I have returned. I've only been away for a few minutes, by the way, uh, just letting this dry. Uh, it gave me a chance to clean my palette and change the water in one of my bowls. Uh, it also gave me, um, when I come back and look at it, it is touch dry now, by the way. Um, it, I'm now seeing it with fresh eyes um, because you get a little bit blinded by what you're actually doing. And looking at it I want a little bit more floppy stuff around there so I'm going to go back to that's dry just a little bit not a lot um, go back to my pale cadmium red and I'm going to splosh up I'm going to be a bit braver look I'm going to chuck a bit more of this around uh, because I'm getting a little bit bunchy there well I did say it was a bunch of flowers but it's, it, bit too bunchy for the composition and I need a little bit more red about right now what I'm going to do is look on on my palette now I've now got my chrome yellow um, in the cheap range is just described as um, a medium yellow right now here's my pair right remember I'm back to my cherries again remember uh, look I'm going to leave uh, some highlights and I haven't interfered with this color by the way uh, it is exactly as it is as it came out of the tube I've just picked up a little bit of water I'm going to flop it right it's going to go over the ink that's all right that's no problem I'm not going to panic about that. He says lifting a little bit of the water off. Right. And if I touch down uh, at the top here somewhere and it goes green, that's no problem because pears are green before they ripen up. So, no problem. All right. Let's get around the bottom of the pear here. Okay, I've touched in a little bit of that ink. That, that, that creates a little bit of interest as far as I'm concerned. Look, this isn't painting by numbers. When I was uh, going on earlier on about the hairdryer, if I had used the hairdryer on that first layer, when I come to the second layer, Yes, it would have dried my paint, but it would have dried all these areas around it. It would have dried the paper out. It would have disturbed the, um, the fibres 
and the dressing which was in in the actual paper so that few minutes pays just dropped a little bit of water on that bit under there bit of a big puddle so i just lift a little bit of it off not a lot and i'm now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh use a sap green look it's very very virulent um uh, it's not as virulent as that hooker green which i bit i like i normally like to build around look but you can see how bright that is it's a bit day glow sock like again um but i build my greens around this in other words what i would actually do i can add a little bit of blue to it and look this will kill it off right you can see it's just died a little bit uh, I'm happier with that it was okay on the holly um, because that was a sort of a cele celebration type um, picture right now pick up a little bit of water a little bit more colour kill it off I'm working over the top of the pear there at the moment. Right, let's just check it there. Oh, that's not too bad. Quite happy with that. Look, as I said earlier, I'm leaving little gaps. Uh, they're the highlights and they're the stalks. Look, I'm just coming very close to that pear. I don't want it to run into the pear at this moment in time. Look, underneath the petals... It will always be just a little bit darker and I can use that to cut out the side of my glass. I don't want it to get too busy so I'll keep it fairly blockish but just leave the suggestions under there. Come down the side. I don't want it too bright. Look, I'm, I know I'm close to the flower. It doesn't matter because there's going to be leaves going there. So I'll come down the side, I've watered it out just a little tiny bit, just get inside the glass, remember glass and water has no colour of its own, so therefore it's reliant upon things which are around it, just to be visible. I know I get a little bit repetitive on some of these videos um, but some of the things which I tend to say are important to me uh, and maybe to you at a later date it's not a senior thing <laughs> it is what teachers tend to do uh, trying to make a point all the time okay Right, I'm going to, no I'm not, while I've got that green, I want, I want the flowers at the top to relate to it, so let me just check that I'm within the range, more or less, check it, yeah, well I'm in the range but there's too much water there, so let's, Get a little bit more paint on there. Okay. Right, now this is going to be up to you. This is your input on your own painting. Uh, I'm not going to shout out number eight and therefore you go, go to number eight. Um, oh, it's very virulent. A little bit more blue. And so therefore, you're going to have to build your own palette. Um, in the same way as I'm building my palette around here. I want, I want depth in here. Um, because, 
well obviously I mean say that they're cutting the light out on there I really want to go in and hit round the bottom here but I'm going to avoid that just at this moment in time um, because I might lose a little bit of control go on live dangerously live dangerously Barry okay here we go look if it runs into that glass it doesn't matter As I said on the other video, look, we're artists, we like to live life on the edge. <laughs> as long as it's your edge and nobody else's, it really doesn't matter. Pop just a little bit of green there because it will reflect off of there. Right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look. I've now gone to my crimson. or in the sheep range, madder, madder red as I said before, rose madder, it's a rose by any other name, still looks the same, and I'm just going to kill that, and I'm going to kill this with a little touch, just a little touch of yellow, that, that is going to um, kill that off. And I'm going to come down the sides here. I'll just stay clear of that pair. Shoot under there. Around here. A little bit around there. And down the side here. Look, if you want to move your paper around, do so. As long as you move it back, there's the back of the table. Before it all starts to dribble downwards, or if you're failing that, you'll have it dribbling upwards. Look, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to water this out. Uh, I'm going to shallow out the um, board just a little bit here. So it doesn't run away too fast on me. Under the leaves. I've arranged for this so that it disappears when it comes out the other side here, by the way. Uh, reason being is because if you put a line right the way through there, it divides your painting in half. Not a very clever move, that one. In the same way as, oh, I accidentally touched the glass, but it doesn't matter. Um, when I was talking about the, this vase, there is nothing worse than a centralised vase with one flower there and another flower there, uh, and then you cut it in half with the background. Because this area here becomes a mirror image of this area over there and you get a mirror image of the table and a mirror image of the table on the other side it's so hard to know what to do with them um, so if you just offset things just a little bit it will make your life a lot lot easier i will talk about um, composition at some point because composition is is very very important um, when we do things like portraits and things like that if you're head on you've got two eyes two ears and a central mouth and divided by a nose um, well the same thing is tending to go on even on these sort of still lives right now that's a little bit heavy just on the inside of the glass so I'm just going to wipe my brush back I'm just going to pick that up better okay I'm making decisions all the time here <laughs> lift that one out um, quite happy with that around there quite, I quite like that green in there I'd like to bring a little bit more of that on the outside edge here out here 
but I might. Look, I said I don't know what these plants are, so I don't actually know what shape these leaves are supposed to be. Right, okay, what have we got? Okay, right now I'm just going to leave that for a moment. Come back, make a few more decisions. Right, uh, I've just had a slight pause um, to try and let my brain catch up with what's going on. I'm going to sort this area out here. It's uh, very, very weak. Um, I'm just going to zoom that in. and There we go. Well, it's very weak around this area and I need to sort the stem uh, of the glass out. And I'm going to be using one of these cheap brushes and I've just got plain water on it. One of the reasons why I'm actually doing this because I'm so tempted to reach for one of my better brushes but when I'm working alongside with students, um, I will use whatever equipment they've got um, and their colours. Uh, having done so, I will then pass them over one of my better quality ones or a, a, a colour which they may not have on their palette um, to let them try it so that they can see the advantage. Um, this is just plain water, by the way, I'm coming down no colour on it at all and use a little bit of that colour just around there um, I'm also going to use a little bit of plain water it, um, it's fiddling really look I, I've left uh, a few of my just ink ink um, lines down there so I'm just going to run a little bit of water over it so they float in that's enough he says lifting a little bit of the water off oh, I like I like that bit down the bottom there okay right now let's zoom that back I'm going back to the pair and the pear is a little bit on the lemon side so I'm going to make some alterations around it but first of all I'm just going to sort that little corner of that uh, jar out go back to one of my greens it's still a bit watery but uh, let's see what happens I don't want to touch that wet um, ink there so I'm going to stay clear of it and just shape that jar up a little bit that's better I'm happier with that there we go I'm going to come back with a little bit of green on there uh, later on darker green so leave that alone just for the moment uh, I was saying about the pear. Right now, look, um, to get the little bit of the lemony look off of it, I've got a, um, a deep yellow. Just going to water it down a little bit. A deep yellow there. If you haven't got this in your palette, it's a sort of golden yellow, um, use your cadmium along with one of your mid mid yellows or power yellows let me just pop that on there see what color i've got uh, yeah that's better and i'm going to drop it in fairly loose along the bottom here once again it is rather a large puddle And I'm going to drop a little drop on the core piece. Just looked at my monitor and it's looking very um, orangey. That's better. I'm happier with that. So there's two little problems I've um, just sorted out.
Okay, so I will now um, go and change my water. No, I won't. Look, I, I, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to pop some darker greens underneath the flowers, or so-called flowers. There we go, so we can see what we've got. The interesting thing is I can see more on my monitor <laughs> than I can on my picture because I'm, slight, I'm sitting slightly out of line with it. Um, but I'm going to pop some darker greens just under this area there. Right, now when it comes to the greens, remember the greens we were using on the little trees, on the, uh, on the little brush doodling uh, video. Um, and if you've been doing those, you will already start to understand a little bit about your greens. And how to doodle with your brush. Oh, that one's running away. So I've, look, I've just lift, lifting it off. And I'm also going to be popping just a little bit. Look, I've mixed my two uh, alizarine or madder red, rose madder, uh, and my vermilion together. And I'm just going to strengthen this. Um, I'm not going to stick to the actual um, leaves per se. I'm just going to pop a little bit on there. Very loosely. To start punching those up just a little bit. And take that opportunity to take a little bit of my yellow once again, which I was using on the pair, and just pop it in there. Look, if it's a bit wet and it bleeds, I, I've got no problems with that. I'm going to pop another little bit of uh, yellow up here somewhere. Yellow, he says it turns out to be green because it's touched down. Right, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go away uh, and let all this lot dry, uh, wash my palette and clear my thoughts just a little bit. Uh, one of the reasons why my sisters and I, our, our paintings used to turn to mud is because we were sharing the same jam, jam jar um, and paint, paint boxes, so therefore all the paints became contaminated um, with the three colours, turning them to uh, mud, neutral colours actually, and neutral colours are very good, but we don't need them at this moment in time. Okay, I'm going to stop chatting just for a moment. Okay, I'm now back. I've been a slight pause there. Well, when I say a slight pause, <laughs> it's been two days actually. Uh, look, life doesn't stop just because the old boy's painted. Right, okay, let's pick up where we left off. Now, before I go on, um, what I want to do is look, I expect you to do more than one of these and um, here's a little tip if you've got some rejects and you're bound to have one or two um, get hold of them cut them up right look they're not even really, really flowers uh, they're just blobs of color look chuck them on and have a look you can look you can do your own bit, little bit of flower arranging here and so you can decide where you're going to go, right? Now, look, it doesn't matter where I chuck them, you're going to have a different view because it's going to be your painting, not mine, all right? So, 
here's an opportunity just to chuck them around, have a look, see what you think. Right? They say, okay, I like that. I don't like that because it's a bit on the square side. Never mind. So, just an idea for you. All right? Um, right, I'm going to move back down to the pair. Uh, and what I've got is, look, I've got a straight ochre. It's not interfered with at all. And I've back to my uh, little tree brush doodling again. Look, I'm just going to plunk them on. Little fragmented. Dance around. Add just a little bit of water. So it's not such a raw colour at the top. Right, now you can use this technique when you're doing lemons or oranges. I'm going to pick up a little bit more water because these bits down the bottom there, they're all very, very samey. Let's see if I can zoom that in so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. Look, I've just got a little bit of extra water in there. And I'm just taking the little fragmented pieces and watering them out and lifting off at the same time. Look, you don't want it to turn into like a disease. Um, that's enough. Right? I think, well, I think that's enough. Okay, let's take that back. Uh, I'll need to re-establish that core section there at some point. Wrong way. Okay. Right, now let's go back up to and back to the flowers. Um, I'm going back to my um, big brush when I can find it. Uh, I should have reactivated these before I got started actually. So I've got a little bit of And I'm just going to flop them on, they're too weak. They're a bit puddly again still, right? No problem there. And I'm going to leave this top fairly weak. Um, I will strengthen up around there. And I'm now going to start looking at my greens. I'm going to pop up that what is going to be, or could be, a petal. Just strengthen it just a little bit more. Right, uh, I'm now going to um, get my green palette out. So I'll pause for a moment. Okay, I've got my green palette out. Um, I'll be using just a little less water on my brush now because I want to um, strengthen the colours up. Just test my greens. Yeah, okay, that would that would do. Yeah, that's that's nice and strong. Okay, um, there's my palette, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to strengthen the bottom of the glass. It's like I said, I've got just a little less water on my brush now. I'll, I'll float that out in a minute while I've got this strong colour. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was on my painting. Look, that, that was one of my loose flowers I forgot to take off. Okay, away you go. Um, right, let's get underneath. Because underneath the, the flowers, um, there will always be 
uh, that darker shade there. I still don't quite know what these leaves are. It, it really doesn't matter too much at the moment. Um, when I've um, finished flopping stuff around, then I'll get a um, tighter brush and put in just a little bit more detail in there. Is that my painting or is that one I've thrown on? Oh, that's my painting. Okay. <laughs> Decide how far to go down with this. Right, start getting in between there. Look, I'm cutting cutting the flowers out now. Just a little bit, not too much. Because although this is dark green, I'm going to go down even even darker. And one of the reasons being, and I will give a bit more information about this as I go, uh, I'm always talking, not just me, other people as well. We talk about highlights, and highlights, oh, they're absolutely wonderful. But what a lot of um, people tend to forget, especially when you're first starting, is that low lights, oh, some of the low lights are absolutely wonderful and you'll see them coming into effect. Now I'm getting somewhere near where I actually want to go. Um, right, just looking at the glass, I'm wondering whether or not to reactivate that little bit of ink. I think I'm tempted to do that. So what I do is I'll just get the other brush and I'll put a little bit of water, a little drop of water on top of that ink well, leave that just for a moment and then take it, take advantage of it. Um, I want a little bit of that ink down the bottom of the glass there as well so I'm picking up a little bit of ink. Well it's not very strong, never mind that will do. Right, now go back and just see if I can lift a little bit of that ink down. Right. It's not quite as much as I wanted, but I'm going to have to settle for that. Look, not all the decisions I make are going to be good ones. But, I'm not going to beat myself up. Look, I'm just picking up the edge of that hard green. And drop a little bit of that into the bottom of the glass. Where the stems are hitting the glass, random again, random ones in here, so don't just look for a space and pop them in, because they are supposed to be random, that's better. Okay, right, let's strengthen that green up. No, I'm going to strengthen the flowers up just a little bit. A little bit more cadmium. I'm picking it up off my big plate now, by the way, um, rather than get the tubes out again. I need a little bit of depth in there. Mm -hmm. 
little bit of depth in here. What, look, don't go and do this all the way round uh, because it, it, it gets boring. So what I'm going to do is strengthen it up with just a little bit of my alizarine, crimson, uh, rose madder, whatever. Um, and because this is a loose painting, I'm not over mixing the colours as such. Um, if this was a tight painting, then I'd probably be adding blues and things of that nature to get the deeper shades. Alright, so I'm just splashing a little bit on there at the moment. That little bit outside there, I'll strengthen that just a little bit. Right, now I'm going to strengthen that green up yet again. Look, I'm taking my ultramarine and my, I think it was sap green. And I'm going to add just that little bit of red to it, like exactly the same way as I did with those uh, doodle trees. Now, look at the colour of this now. Right now that's quite, look, that's quite, quite deep. And that is what I want to get now back inside here. This, once again, look, the moment I do that, I, I'm going to zoom that in. The moment I do that in, that zooms the reds up. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about low lights. Look, look at that, look, it pushes what was quite a weak green there. It's pushed it up quite a lot. Remember, there's a lot of shade in between all these flowers. And I'm also going to use it now down the bottom of my glass. It's still a little bit wet. And I'm going to use it under the pear. Actually, what I'm doing, look, I'm cutting the shape of the pear out. I've put just a little tiny bit in the core. Um, like with the cherries, I'll just water that out. Look, I know I keep going back to uh, um, previous videos. Um, because that is where, on the cherries and the trees, you would, you were doing a lot of learning. And what the, some of the things, they may have seen very simple when we were first doing them. But there was a reason for that. And the, the reason is uh, now becoming a little, hopefully, a little bit more clearer. Right now, I put quite a bit of water onto those areas. I'm now going to go back to my big brush. Look, you can see why this this little brush doesn't hold enough water for me sometimes, um, which is why I need this. Look, I'm just going to run that out. Then water them off. I don't want them. I want them running, but I don't want them to be spikes. Oh, that one worked really well. This one is uh, struggling a little bit with this one, so I get a little bit more water and just let it run away. Now, can you see that in there? That is the low lights, which I'm. Was talking about they are they are really beautiful in exactly the same way as look the highlight up round there or the highlight round the edge of the glass he says looking at the monitor um, highlights are, are really nice 
uh, low lights they are, they are superb um, and in order to say that that is a petal I'm just going to put a little, little bit of shade under it nothing too tight so what have I got here now um, let's have a quick look see I'm going to zoom that back Right now I'm going to change my brushes um, to a smaller brush so I'll stop just for a moment uh, I want that to dry because my hand's going to be travelling over it OK right now next step I'm going to have my warm natural greys and I'm just going to add just a little touch of green in there and the colour's very weak and look get your paper and look when I'm I'm practicing this and look I'm balancing on my little finger okay can we can you see that I, let me just zoom that down just a little bit there we go okay now I'm going to pop these on my painting right make my make my decisions where they're going to go let's get my monitor in place right I'm on my little finger I'm just going to practice a couple of these right when when I feel ready here we go no didn't touch that there we are right even those I will just water out and you don't you I'd like a little bit more green in there actually so I'm just going to add a little bit of green to that there we go it's better it's a bit strong um, and I'm going to be leaving this painting now at this stage um, it's not because I'm bored with it um, it's because this is a learning uh, process for you here and if I complete the picture I will rob you of you using some of your own imagination and this little video here is as I said right from the word go this is really all about you this is not about me showboating um, I will showboat at some point or another I know I will um, I'm what I'm actually doing is I'm just showing you a process here um, so if I pop in another couple of flowers just for the thumbnail um, then you'll know how I went about it and I know that sounds very strange popping something in for a thumbnail um, but it is because people tend to hit on something which looks complete looks attractive um, and not because he's got some learning content in it those two are a little bit samey by the way so I'm going to get, I'm going to get just a little bit of very weak green, very weak, right, and I'm going to blob them in a little bit on the heavy side, that's better. hardly visible uh, see that's very subtle okay so I'm going to stop there and I'm just going to round this up for you okay Okay folks, uh, let's just round this little uh, exercise up. Um, I've done very little in actual fact um, just to uh, 
pump it up a little bit. Uh, look, if I can zoom that in, I'll show you what I've done. Um, I've put a little bit more of the um, neutral grey, warm greys around the outside here and underneath the leaves, in other words, because the leaves come out, they're going to throw a little bit of shadow. Earlier on I noticed when looking back at the clips I described it as natural uh, warm grey. It's not natural, uh, it is a neutral warm grey. Okay, um, what else have I done? Uh, I've put a little bit more on this side over here. I've splashed a little bit more around at the top here. Um, and let me zoom that back. Look, the whole point of this exercise was to try and change some of your attitudes towards your, your own work. Uh, to stop you beating yourself up all the time. Look, um, whenever I finish a painting, I always, always mentally give myself marks out of a 10. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I'm gonna give it an eight. Uh, regardless, even if it turns out to be a reject, I always give myself six, because six is for trying, okay? And uh, I, I can give myself another one for the effort. Uh, and I always give myself another one for finishing, right? <laughs> Regardless of what the outcome is, um, if if I start, I get six. If I finish, I get that extra one. So in this, oh, hang on, just just another thought here. I didn't finish, <laughs> but that is what of what are the the effect I'm after. Right now, with this, don't try and. Um, do a, a, a sort of a, a copy of this as such. What I've been showing you is, is a way of thinking. Right, now, you can remove the pear. Use your tracing. Remove the pear, put an apple there. You can remove the glass and put yourself, maybe you've got a nice little vase indoors, um, maybe a blue and white one or, or uh, a copper one, whatever you feel comfortable with and your flower arranging you just once you've got a, a couple of rejects just move them around until you get what you feel um, you want okay oh I, I, I pumped up a little bit of yellow up on this point over here and before I com actually complete a painting and s uh, put a signature on it what I always do is I put, and I keep these around, a card mount around it, in this case, thin card. <coughs> and I was talking about composition. Now, in this particular case, uh, the, the, the vase or the jam jar is slightly offset. Let me just move that in there. It's slightly offset. And my composition, when I put these little items at the top here, right, uh, it was a pointer, because in actual fact, you'll go from the flowers, or maybe uh, from the pear, I'm never sure where, uh, it's a pointer, look, it's swinging round and coming back down and picking up the pear. And the pear is coming round and it's picking up the glass. And the glass is now travelling up and it's picking up the flowers. So it tends to keep your eye moving around the actual composition of the picture. Uh, very much like a tune. Um, you can't fragment a tune too much. It's got to have some sort of uh, natural flow to it. And in this particular case, um, I've put a natural flow in my painting. Um, I'm getting in the way there. Right, now while I'm carry on talking, what I'm going to do is just zoom this in, nice and tight, 
so you can now see look the bits which I really like I really quite like these um, very loose shadows at the bottom there um, the glass I really like that little piece on the glass there uh, that's not too bad um, well I'm going to travel up to the flowers Look, see that little tiny piece coming through there? That's pointing back down. So you travel up through that, back into the flower arrangement. I've quietened the corners off just a little tiny bit with my warm neutral greys. Uh, I've got my little pointers coming back. I don't like that particular one there. Um, the reason being is because it is running parallel with this one right so it might have been nice had it gone up a little bit higher and not run like two parallel lines look I'm not going to like everything I do all right but if there's a couple of bits on there which uh, I like that's really great now if you put together all the bits and pieces I have been doing on my other videos and this one they're not works of art but they are open and, and they're honest um, when things go a little bit wrong I can identify that when they go a little bit right I can identify that also right so in actual fact you've got <laughs> this little jigsaw going on here but if I in the process of doing this have managed to remove some of those big <sighs> and I know I know you get those big size and turn them to possible little hmm uh, then regardless of whether or not I get six seven or eight I will call that a win if I get a that's for me is a win okay so Relax, enjoy your painting, while I go off and do the thing I do best. Thank you for your time, folks. Bye-de-bye. I like a nice cup of tea in the morning For to start the day, you see And the top past eleven well, my idea of heaven is a nice cup of tea. I like a nice cup of tea with my dinner. And a nice cup of tea with my tea. And when it's time for bed, there's a lot to be said for a nice cup of tea.